people like that, but I played sports all the time. I mean, basketball, baseball, we constantly were doing something. I, I would run all the time. And, and then I was in FFA, and I was in FBLA, and I was in FHA, and I mean, I was in like every, everything that Sparks High School offered, I did. And my mother, when I graduated, because I have a sister that's a year older than I am, when I graduated, my mother breathed a sigh of relief and was like, ah, oh, it's over. I can enjoy my life now. And then she had children in college who were uh, knuckleheads and wanted to quit and all that. And there were lots of tears and all that. But what I'm saying is this, is that they're, they're, it's so easy for us. Listen, I, as young parents, parents of teenagers and children, it's easy for us to get caught up in the hustle and bustle of life. I know I've been there as, as a kid, and, and I know I'm going to get there as, as an adult as well. But don't miss those opportunities. I mean, we, we saw it in Deuteronomy 6 7. Teach them, tell your children when you're, when you're in your house, when you're sitting, when you do get that night, that very rare night that you're actually home. But then he says, that when you're walking in the way, when you're driving down the road, I spent so many hours in a vehicle with my parents. Did they always come through with some nugget of wisdom and truth from the scriptures? No. But they still modeled a relationship with Jesus Christ. They modeled the gospel before me. And as a result of that, I, I believe I came to know God in a much fuller, deeper, intimate way because of the investment that my parents made in my life. See, it's not, you don't, there's some of you sitting here like, I, I'm not a professional, I didn't go to seminary. I didn't, you know, God didn't call me into the ministry. Well, yeah, He did. He did call you into the ministry, ministering to your children. But it's not rocket science. It's not rocket science to, to teach your, your children some scripture. To maybe to teach them a memory verse a month. You know, like, give them a month. I mean, they're going to memorize it like in a day because children, like, remember ridiculous things. Uh, but, but, but teach them, pray with them. Sing, sing with them. Um, I mean, there, there are so many things that we can do to teach our children. I can, I, another thing that I would, I would love to offer you is this, is that there, there are ways that you and I uh, can, or there are some, some materials that I have that I could set you up with, you would receive a weekly email that has little family devotions that you could go through. I have books, and then that was one of the things that, that I, I want to do is, is resource you as parents. I have books. I'm not a parent, and I need to be reading these books just as much as anybody else does, but I have an entire shelf in my office of books that, that hopefully can equip you to be a gospel-centered parent, to, to take advantage of the opportunities that you have as a parent. Why? Because we love God. And let's, let's move. i got one more thing, and then we'll just start closing it up. Verse 8, he says this, and, and that they should not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. We see the last thing, what I'm calling generational transformation. Will the entire generation be transformed? No. But what I want us to do is, what I want to encourage us to do is to pour into our children, our children's children, so that they will come to know God and be transformed. So that they won't repeat the cycles that maybe we've been through. So that they won't have to know some of the pain and the, the, the poor decisions that we've made. We teach them to love God and be transformed from a very early age. See, we grow up in church, or, and, or I've grown up in church, and sometimes you know you sit around and you, you hear other people tell their, tell their testimonies, and they're like, "Oh, you know, I was on drugs, and I was doing this, and I was doing that." And you're like, you're, you're sitting there, like, "I want a testimony like that." What's wrong with the testimony of I grew up in church and, and you know, I thought I was a good kid, but I finally came to this realization that, no, I'm not good. I'm not good enough. I'll never be good enough, and I need Jesus Christ. What's wrong with that testimony? There's nothing wrong with it. And so the, 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 that's my prayer for my children. Little Sarah Elizabeth, that, that she would have that testimony. I've already named my daughter, but I probably will never have. Um, dude, some of you are like, uh, excuse me? <laughs> I just realized I needed to clarify that. I, I named this child when I was 17. Uh, and, ooh, close, that was close. Uh, no. I was thinking, Humphrey's gonna have a lot of questions to answer. <laughs> it is, thank you. That was my great, great grandmother's name, Sarah Elizabeth. Sarah Elizabeth, that's all time. 
we got this to see. A little statement that Miss Pam and I went to. It's hard to recover for that one. Uh, we went to a children's ministry conference because I don't know anything about children's ministry either. Um, but I can even laugh at that one. Like, oh gosh, I would see that. Um, but the guy who was in charge of it said this little statement, and, and I, I believe this to the bottom of my heart. He says this, it's easier to build children than to repair men. It's easier to build children than to repair men. I mean, when, when he said that, I was like, ouch. There's so much truth in that. It's easier to build children than to repair men. And so, as, as we close, I, I want to kind of lay some, some burdens on you. I'm not trying to, to like say, hey, I'm, I'm all stuck free. I have no responsibility. But I, I want you to see this. I love this quote from Timothy Paul Jones. He's a professor of family ministry at the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. He says this, where do we get the idea that training of parents should happen primarily through church programs with a bit of help from the pulpit? What if the training of husbands and fathers, and then I would like to add personally, uh, wives and, and uh, mothers, where do we get that? What if the training of these these people began to come from relationships with others, other more mature men and women? And he says this: We don't need more programs. We need deeper relationships. I don't want to upset anyone or if anyone. This is the busiest church I've ever seen, and I may be like completely wrong, but there is always something going on here. And that's great. But sometimes I worry at what costs. Sometimes I worry at what costs. Are we missing genuine relationships with our families because of that? Are we using all of the busyness and all of the activities and all the programs? Are we using those not just so we can say, hey, we're a little Cypress Baptist Church and we've got a lot of stuff going on. Why don't you come join us for this, 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 and this? Why don't we use those as an opportunity to build deep, meaningful relationships? get an email about that one, I might be in trouble because you're like looking at me like, sit down. I mean that with all goodness and sweetness that I have to do. And here, here's why. Some of you are sitting here, and I'm, I'm almost saying, you're thinking, Nick, I don't have kids anymore. My, they're grown and gone. But here's what I want you to see is that we all have a responsibility. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we all have a responsibility. And here's the other thing. We all have opportunities. There are so many opportunities, because there's so much that goes on, there are so many opportunities for us to serve. I feel pretty sure Miss Pam and, and Miss Edna would, would welcome so much more help in the preschool and the children's ministry. Am I right? And some of you are like, I, I can't do I, I, I hate kids. You don't hate kids. <laughs> I've never met a child that I just hate them. <laughs> I've met some children thinking, your neck. <laughs> never, never hey, just, you know, one good time, it would be okay. I substituted for like 10 years. Um, and, and, but what I want to say is this is, is there, there are opportunities to, to serve. From, from the platform, I can say I would love to have some, some adults come and join us on Wednesday nights to help me uh, control the crowd. And, and I'm going to complain, and I'm hopefully going to step on a couple toes when I say this. I have adults up there, but sometimes my adults sit in the back, and they're just there. And sometimes they get up and walk out. And sometimes they're almost just as much of a distraction as the kids are. And so what I'm saying is this, is come and, and just sit in the middle of these kids. Because here's the thing. These from babies to preschool to children to teenagers to college students to young adults, they need the generation before them to pour into their life. The time for us just sitting around churches and, and coming on Sundays and saying, well, I, I go to Sunday school. That's over. It's time for us to get to where if we are a family of faith, it's our responsibility to pour into the next generation. And then, another implication I believe this lays on us is for those of us that, who are younger. Ready? Open your ears and open your eyes. Look for the people who want, who love you. There are, there are young, young people. There are, there are people who love you, and they might be weird, and they might smell weird. But they love you. And here's another truth. You smell weird, too. 
Because <laughs> y'all are, y'all hug. And sometimes I have like, ooh. <laughs> but what I'm saying is this. Open your ears. Open your eyes. There are people who love you and want to pour into your life. And so we need to open ourselves up to that. It doesn't matter how old or young you are. There, there's someone, again, I said earlier, there's someone in this church who has a story that could, could, could just do wonders in your life. And so my question to you this morning is this, is what are you going to do with this? What relationship, what relationships are you going to begin to foster? If, if, you, if you think you're wise, and most of you are, who are you going to go seek out? If you're in over your head in some situation, who are you going to go seek out? One of the things I've challenged our students with on Wednesday nights, and I'm going to challenge them from the stage yet again, and ask, anybody found that prayer partner yet? Got one, two, yeah? That's what I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging them to do, is find a peer who will pray with them, who will encourage them, who will hold them at home. Maybe we all need to do that. Maybe we need to go find someone for, for a little or later on. What, what, I can't remember what Minister George called it, but like chronologically mature, I think is what we call it. Uh, if you're a little more chronologically mature, maybe you need to go find that young person that you can pour into. And so what will you do with that? What I want us to do in these moments, uh, in, in a moment we're going to have, have a time of invitation where you can come and you can pray and respond to God. You can Go find your child and pray with and over your child. I want to encourage you to move. And then what we're going to do, we're going to have a time of invitation. And then we're going to have a time of offering. And then what we're going to do is we have a time of fellowship. We're a little Cypress Baptist Church. That dysfunctional, crazy family that is a little Cypress Baptist Church. We're going to have a time of fellowship. We have hamburgers and hot dogs and some other stuff. Hopefully you all brought. Uh, and we're going to eat and enjoy some time with one another. We're going to get to begin to foster those relationships. And so don't just bail. Hang out. Get to talk to somebody that you don't ever talk to. I can say this because I'm, I still kind of feel like an outsider myself. It's hard to get to know people in a church this big. I grew up in a church where it's mostly my family. And so I knew everybody. And so now I come here and I, 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 I know some of your faces. And I'm always like, hi, friend. Uh, I want to know you. We need one another. And so don't be that, that guy who's like, well, I'm going to go now. Stay and foster those relationships. Find someone that you don't know and get to know them. Because who knows, that might be the person that you need two months down the road. So I'm going to pray, and then, uh, and then Dan and Miss Betty and, uh, and all of them are going to come up, and we're going to have time of meditation. So let's pray. Father God, uh, thank you, God, that you work and you move in our lives. And God, you... Call us to um, God. You call us to pour into the next generation. So in these moments, God, as we respond, God, may we make commitments, and not just a commitment for the sake of commitment, but God, that we would truly commit to pouring into the next generation. God, we would truly commit and do the things that you you've even just called us to. God, you've commanded us. You've demanded us to do those things. So, Father, God, move us in these moments. God, lay someone on our heart, someone we can pour into. Someone that we can receive from. And there's so much wisdom. There's so much experience in your church. And so, Father, may we reap the benefits of that. So, God, move in these moments as only. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. As we stand, as we stand.
forth for this uh, morning's offering. Uh, we are going to turn it off in time watch a video of Rich Texas Church in Brownsboro, uh, just north of here. You know where that is, little town there. And, uh, and again, the goal for Rich Texas for our church is three thousand dollars. And so, just to help out Texas missions. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day that you've given us. This opportunity that we have to give to you, Lord, to give to this uh, church and their cause. Also, we reach Texas and, uh, and Texas missions, Lord. Father, we praise you for who you are, for all that you do in our lives. Father, thank you for this message that you laid on this heart, Psalm 78. The fact that uh, as long as we have breath, you haven't given the bonus yet, Lord. We still have opportunity to minister in your name. We still have opportunity to uh, reach out to others. To uh, be an encouragement, to be an example to one another as well. We took all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, so for the majority of the history of our church, we're 160 years old. We've been a church that's kind of been 100 members or, or less and sometimes more. One thing about that is that this has always been home for the church members. They've always felt like Rock Hill is their home. And um, maybe a shift happened in their heart where they started realizing that this home, the things that we...